Every year, tens of trillions of dollars move quietly across global borders, often slipping under the radar of everyday headlines. Today, we're diving into the world of the current account, zooming in on primary and secondary income, less talked about than trade, but packed with even more jaw-dropping numbers that'll definitely surprise you. Let's uncover the story behind these mysterious capital flows. So remember, there are two main accounts for a country when uh, describing international capital flows. There's the current account, and then there is the capital and financial account. They are mere images of one another. If you run a current account deficit like the U.S. does, uh, driven by its trade deficit, uh, which is a component of the current account, then you must run an equally sized capital and financial account surplus. Hopefully uh, that is clear. We have covered that in depth multiple times. Remember, the current account is mainly comprised of the balance of trade, but there is a small difference here. There is a small gap between the balance of trade, $414 billion per quarter, and the current account at $450 billion per quarter. There is a small delta. So here are the components of the current account. And we can see uh, overall in orange, that is the overall reading for the current account. Uh, and you can see we run a large goods deficit, a, a small services surplus. You combine goods and services. That is the balance of trade. Uh, we run a very large trade deficit. That is what is driving the current account. But there are also these uh, very, very small components of primary and secondary income. Uh, secondary income, we have glossed over these, but I found some data this morning that was really pretty shocking that we're going to get into uh, and really describe what is going on in secondary income and primary income. Primary income is almost negligible. We will address it just so you know what it is. Uh, secondary income, as you can see, almost entirely offsets the services surplus that so many people like to point out. Uh, it is completely negated by the secondary income. This is where really the interesting data is that we're going to look at today. Um, so again, this is the overall current account. These are the main components, mainly the balance of trade, goods and services, but also secondary and primary income are also components. Remember that the capital account surplus that we were looking at here, the mirror image, the other side of a current account deficit, the capital account surplus, remember that that drives uh, financial asset prices. Here is home affordability. As we run a larger uh, current account deficit, we can see that home affordability gets worse. Uh, this goes all the way back to the 80s, is very tightly correlated. The only time that it breaks the correlation is this green box from January of 2012 until January 2020. Well, here are mortgage-backed security holdings by the Fed from January of 2012 to January 2020. Uh, the green box is synced up. Uh, the Fed was engaged in mortgage-backed security purchases and subsequent quantitative tightening, uh, which is why home affordability broke the correlation from the capital account. But generally speaking, uh, this is, you know, purchases of U.S. treasuries, of homes, like we have covered with the foreign direct investment, um, and, and other financial assets in America. So always worth pointing that out. That is a uh, often under-discussed dynamic. So here's primary and secondary income. Again, primary income, uh, we were looking here, is a very, very minor component. We run a slight deficit in primary income. We will address it just so you know what it is. It is uh, income from investments like direct investment income, portfolio investment income, that sort of thing, uh, compensation, wages. Uh, secondary income is really where the story is. Now, uh, I will note that the primary income surplus was significant uh, up until 2017, 2018, when it really rolled over um, and has been going sharply negative. Secondary income uh, is is a much bigger story, and this is where the uh, the kind of eye opening data really is. This these are transfers without a quid pro quo. Uh, this includes remittance payments uh, and general government uh, transfer payments like government aid. So this is what we're really going to focus on uh, today. But uh, just to show primary income, what I did is I took from 1999 all the way through to 2024. I took some cumulative totals of each of kind of the main categories. We can see direct investment income, uh, 7.6 trillion. These are, uh, this is 7.6 trillion in income, in primary income uh, coming into the US. All these green, uh, you know, this first portion is primary income that is coming to the US. And then in red, pr that, that is primary income going out of the US. Uh, 7.6 trillion in income versus 5.4 trillion in payments 
uh, out of America. Portfolio investment, we have received $6.5 trillion versus $6.1 trillion that we have uh, paid. Now, this is starting to skyrocket because this is where U.S. Treasury debt is, by the way. Uh, and then compensation is negligible, as is other investment income. Uh, these are almost completely negligible. So that is primary income. We can see that since 1999, we have run a, a $2.4 trillion surplus in primary income, although it has rolled over over the past six, seven, eight years. Secondary income, this is really where uh, the interesting data is. So within secondary income, there's two main categories. There is secondary income coming into the U.S., and then there's secondary income that is going out of the U.S. So again, similar uh, concept to how we organize this. It's cumulative total from 1999 through to now. So personal transfers coming into America 150 million. Look at personal transfers leaving America, 1.1 trillion dollars. These are again, you know, foreign remittances uh, which are leaving America, being earned in America and then leaving the country. 1.1 trillion. Uh, we can also see government transfer payments. Uh, the U.S. government, you know, we we sure spend a lot of money sending it out of our borders. Uh, 280 billion dollars over the past. Uh, sent going back to 1999, and then other transfers. Th this is negligible as are uh, other transfers coming into America. Uh, it is important to note that uh, taxes on income and wealth. This is 120 million taxes paid to the U.S. by foreign residents is almost completely negligible. Really, the only things here in secondary income that matter are personal transfers. Again, leaving income earned in America, leaving America, $1.1 trillion, uh, and then government transfer payments, $280 billion. Again, those are uh, that is government aid, foreign aid programs, Social Security payments made to uh, U.S. citizens abroad. So here is uh, charts just directly from the BEA. I will link uh, to these in the description of this video so that you can see uh, kind of what we're talking about. Uh, and play around with this. Here we're looking at secondary income. The main, there's two main kind of subcategories. There's government transfers and then there's private transfers. So what we're doing here is in orange, this is government transfers that are coming into America. And then in blue, we're looking at government transfers leaving America. We can see that the delta uh, has been growing. The gap between government transfer, and, uh, pay, secondary income, government sending money out of the U.S., the delta between that and what the U.S. has been receiving has been growing to a large degree. But here's where the story really is. This is that private transfer, uh, again, coming uh, into America versus leaving America. And again, this goes back to 1999. So in blue, we have income dollars, that are earned in America and then sent overseas. And then in orange, we have private transfers uh, that are uh, earned elsewhere and sent back into America. And again, the jaws are really opening up. We can see that there is a huge amount of money leaving America. And again, if you look just at the um, personal transfer, this is like uh, remittances, we can see that it is uh, very, 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 very large. Um, so about in 2024, about $72 billion was earned in America and then left America. These are those foreign remittances that kind of recently came up uh, in some of the kind of uh, one big beautiful bill discussion. There was talk of increasing. The, currently, they are taxed at 1%. Uh, and there was talk about increasing this to something much higher, like five, I think, or 10%. Well, it ended up getting cut down and we only tax these foreign remittances at 1%. So $72 billion left uh, America last year and that is being taxed at 1%. Again, if you total up from 1999 all the way through till now, these foreign remittances add up to $1.1 trillion. Um, so here's the table. I will also link to this uh, in the description of this video. Uh, but we're going to look at uh, what $1.1 trillion actually correlates to uh, to give you some sense of the scale of this issue. So here is market cap 
of uh, the S&P 500 different companies. And um, remember, $1.1 trillion is in foreign remittances alone is what has left America, uh, and this is driving that secondary income deficit. Uh, this is equivalent to the size of Berkshire Hathaway, uh, which is $768 billion. Uh, we can see Meta, $728 billion. Tesla, $683 billion. Eli Lilly, Visa, United Healthcare. This is the market cap, remember, which is the total value of each of these companies. Uh, it's it's just ever so slightly smaller than an entire Amazon. Johnson & Johnson, Exxon Mobil, one of the largest oil companies in the world. Uh, these foreign remittances are about three times the size of Exxon Mobil. Uh, and again, about three times the size of JP Morgan Chase, one of the biggest banks in the world. Uh, in fact, I ran the numbers and 1.1 trillion would build 81 nuclear uh, aircraft carriers. 81 aircraft carriers, nuclear powered aircraft carriers. Uh, we just went through some of the biggest companies in the world and saw what the market cap is relative to uh, this 1.1 trillion in foreign remittances. It is a large number. Um, and here are some kind of here 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 is the same data. Uh, it's just a little bit easier to see in PDF uh, PDF format. Now remember, in red, these are secondary income that is coming into America. So taxes on income wealth: uh, six billion in 1999, seven billion in 2000. Uh, really, though, where a lot of the uh, actual money is is in primary. Uh, excuse me, private transfer receipts. Uh, and this is where really the large sum of money is, especially on the outbound side, which we see in blue. But I do also want to point out international cooperation. Uh, this is foreign aid, uh, very, very, very simply put. This is a not insignificant amount of money. We can see by 2010, it was $36 billion. Now, we know with this current administration, they've cut a lot of that. Uh, but here, zooming into 2023 and 2024, we can see it was $74 billion. This is a large amount of money. Uh, again, that is being earned in America, created value that is created in America, but then sent abroad. Personal transfers, again, those are those foreign remittances where money is being earned, value is being created in America, money is being earned in America, and then sent overseas. $72 billion in 2024. In 2023, $69 billion. Uh, Insurance-related transfers are also a significant uh, component, as are taxes. Uh, again, $19 billion leaving America in terms of taxes on, say, income and wealth. Uh, that number was $21.5 billion in 2024. Uh, also, charitable donations. So uh, international cooperation, this is direct foreign aid. Uh, but charitable donations are exactly what they sound like. Uh, these are donations to foreign uh, charities, not something like, um, uh, you know, uh, the UN, uh, the uh, World Bank, that sort of thing. So charitable donations are also quite large, $51 billion for 2024. If you add that in to the international cooperation number of $71 billion, you're talking about $150 billion in 2024 that was, again, income and wealth and value that was created in America but then sent overseas. Uh, but again, really the one that was the most eye-opening uh, was that uh, 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 a remittance number, that personal transfer number, $72 billion for 24, $69 billion for 2023. Uh, we can see that those have been skyrocketing going back all the way to the when the data started in 1999. Again, adding up to a cumulative $1.1 trillion uh, since 1999. Again, this would build 81 nuclear-powered Ford-class aircraft carriers uh, and it is also the size of, you know, some of the largest banks in the world, some of the largest oil companies in the world. This is a large amount of money. And it was really, you know, I knew that remittances were kind of a political topic. Uh, and I have uh, spent a lot of time looking at the current account and BEA data. Uh, but I never really thought that secondary income 
uh, would have such such uh, uh, eye opening data within it. Primary income, we can tell, especially recently, is basically uh, you know not even worth looking at because uh, it is not really moving the needle for the current account. Secondary income, you know, I'd always kind of noticed uh, that it played a much larger role, but it was still easily dwarfed by the size of the goods and services, or put another way, the balance of trade, our trade deficit of goods and services, it was dwarfed by that. But then I started looking at it in comparison to services and realized, you know, a lot of people like to talk about the services surplus that the U.S. runs, uh, and but, you know, it's entirely offset almost by uh, losing so much money in secondary income going outbound from America. Again, 1.1 trillion. That that really, really surprised me. Um, I knew that remittances, like I said, were a big story, but I did not know uh, that they were such a large story. We can see that the secondary income, when you compare it to the primary income, uh, this has been uh, growing in terms of deficit pretty much ever since the data started in 1999. It has just been a steady uh, ever widening deficit, at least with primary income, you know, up until 2017, 2018, primary income was at least growing to offset the secondary income deficit, uh, you know, all those remittances and government aid. But primary income is no longer in surplus. It is actually now in deficit ever so slightly. Uh, so that makes the secondary income story much more important. Again, if you are trying to balance the current account deficit, which I think is uh, uh, worth uh, attempting, um, you know, and this is not a partisan thing. The Democrats used to be uh, widely opposed to kind of running large trade deficits and globalization and all that sort of thing. Uh, so this is not a partisan comment. This is driving a huge amount of the kind of asset bubbles and unaffordability of, of things like homes uh, via the, that capital account surplus. Because remember, as the current account deficit widens, that requires ever larger amounts of money to mechanically flow into financial assets. This is part of what is driving wealth inequality. So any effort to, af to try to address the current account deficit is good and I think should become a bipartisan uh, thing like it used to be. It used to be uh, not a partisan issue. It used to be agreed upon, uh, generally speaking, by both parties. There were certainly the kind of pro-corporate pro-globalist sort of wing of the Republican Party, but that 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 part of the Republican Party is basically gone. Uh, so it can be the sort of thing that is bipartisan, um, but we're not going to be able to do that. Uh, we, we, the, the, the trade deficit is certainly uh, going to be quite an uphill battle at $414 billion per quarter. Uh, but we also st got to start looking at the secondary income deficit. I mean, this is a large amount of money uh, it is not nearly as large as, again, that trade deficit, but it is a large number of, of dollars that are being earned in America and then sent overseas. Again, 81 nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. This is a large amount of money. And so if they, you know, if any politician, policymakers are serious about trying to address the current account deficit, one of the areas that they should start to look at is secondary income. So again, I will link uh, the chart here, and I will also link this table, um, which is where you can find uh, the annual data for each of the uh, incoming and outbound uh, receipts for the secondary income. I will link both of these in the, in the description. Uh, so anyways, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, again, remember, uh, memberships are alive. So uh, we just did the weekly recap for that. Uh, if that interests you, great. If not, that's totally cool. Uh, have a great rest of your weekend, and I will catch you in the next one.